Hey there, it's Tom here with a care video for the Aspidistra, otherwise known as the cast iron plant. So this is the all green Aspidistra, which is probably the most popular, most famous. It also goes by the name of the cast iron plant. Uh, it's very, it's kind of, people think it's old fashioned, but it's kind of not. It's kind of available again now. It's all mixed up, this plant, but it is an actually, it is an old fashioned plant. It has been around for many, 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 many years, decades. I can't remember the exact year, but there's a time when it started to appear in um, paintings and things like that. So it's one of the oldest house plants that people used to have. And because of that, it is old fashioned and people didn't like it. Ooh. No Aspidistra, but actually people kind of like it now. It's kind of that in-between stage where it could become very popular again. So this is the original and this one here is the Milky Way, Aspidistra Milky Way, which is slightly different. It's an ever so slightly different species, but it is popular. It has markings on the leaves. I'll show you a proper close-up footage so you can actually have a look. But they basically have the same care requirements, um, which we're going to get onto. All right, so this house plant here is 25 years old. You might not believe me, and I don't blame you, but it actually kind of maybe is. Okay, let me explain. So, I it's one of my oldest house plants. It's one of my very first house plants I ever got, and it did fine where I used to live. And then I moved into my new home, and that was years ago. But the adult, the parent plant, the mother plant, started to decline, and I kind of ignored it. Um, that's my bad, that's my mistake. And this is kind of a cutting of the rootstock, which I'll get onto later on on how to do all this. It's, yeah, it's quite straightforward. But anyway, um, so this is kind of part of the original plant. And the original plant is technically still alive today. It doesn't look very good. I might show you a photo, I might not. It depends on how I'm feeling about it, but it doesn't look the best. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you how to look after it and how to make them look good, because this is doing much better than it was. And this is also, good once you get the technique it's easy they are straightforward plants and i'm going to tell you what to do okay so they do have a reputation for being low light house plants and absolutely that is a well deserved reputation they will definitely definitely do okay in lower light locations they can put up with a lot of neglect and they're tolerant of it they won't make up too much fuss but there's always a but they will grow even slower than they might do normally. So if you have a plant that is at the size that you want and you don't want it to grow any bigger, then a low light location might be okay. But most people who own house plants probably want them to grow. Like I certainly do, I want my plants to grow. And so a low light location potentially isn't ideal. You might only get maybe either no leaves each year or maybe just one or two. It, it, it's, too, it's so slow. I, I don't personally recommend that. Um, what they want is a brighter location. They do not want any sun whatsoever. So do not expose them to sunlight. And most house plants can take a little bit in the morning, a bit in the evening. As for distras, they are very fussy with too much light. So that's the number one rule. Keep it away from the sun. Um, but anything that's bright, um, that sort of medium sort of level, that's that would be ideal. That's when they will grow and you will notice a handful of leaves each year. And you'll be quite pleased with that. But yeah, so low light is okay. It can be tolerated, but they don't really want it. And definitely avoid the sun, but sort of in between those two lower level, you know, low light and medium should be good. Watering can also be slightly problematic. Kind of, just see if you're a little bit careful. Um, under watering, they're fine. They won't make a fuss. They're okay about that. Over watering though can be dangerous and that is definitely to be avoided. Uh, just don't do it. What you'll have is yellowing leaves and with these plants, something weird happens with them. If one of them starts going yellow, there's almost certainly other ones are going to follow. It's like a cascade effect. So if you get in lots of yellow leaves on your Aspidistra, it's almost certainly been overwatered or it has a pest, one of the others, but it's most likely overwatering. So you do need to be careful with too much water. They much, much rather dry out completely and be dry for days at a time. And that's fine. They, they will be okay with that. They won't, again, they don't want that, but they will accept it. They will, they will just, you know, cross their arms, be a bit grumpy, but they will be okay. It's the overwatering they don't like. So it's the sunlight, avoid it and avoid too much water. 
If you can do those things, you will have this plant for a very, very long time. They're incredibly long lived. So humidity, you don't have to worry about it. It's fine. The leaves are quite leathery almost. They just, I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear? They've got a kind of, a level, they're just very textured. They're almost like they're not leaves. It's, it's a strange feeling, but they're not bothered by humidity. Um, I always say this, I suppose if your humidity level was ridiculously low, you may end up with brown tips, perhaps, maybe. Um, but even then, I'm not sure you would, to be honest. They're just so, so, so tolerant. I don't think humidity is going to be an issue in almost anyone's home. If you've got a problem, let me know. I'd love to know about it. But I've never personally experienced any issues with humidity. Okay, temperature. Um, they're actually surprisingly tolerant of colder temperatures. Um, they can actually survive to about minus five degrees Celsius which is what, 45 degrees Fahrenheit? That's a guess. No, it's lower than that. Okay, it's actually this figure. That's definitely what it is in Fahrenheit, okay? Um, I need to do the conversion after I have finished filming. But yeah, um, temperature, they can cope with cold temperatures. They are house plants ultimately, so you probably do want to bring them inside before it gets really cold, but if you leave them outside because you forget, or you, you live in part of the world that doesn't get really, really, really cold winters, you might want to leave it outside your choice um on my website i have an article that's i wrote ages ago and there's so many comments from people who talk about how they have their house plants for uh the aspidistris for literally decades and they keep them outside and they're fine and they really think they do well out there so it's definitely a possibility but i'm talking it more from a house plant perspective so i will not leave mine outside during winter i will bring them in but if you want to they can survive down to minus five degrees as for feeding, as you may expect, for a plant which does not grow very fast, they, they're not heavy feeders. They do not need to be fed regularly. Um, that's controversial. Some people might be telling me, no, you need to feed them. But I, I, you don't. This one grows, that one grows. They, they do grow, okay? They just don't need a huge amount of feed. I'm talking maybe twice, three times a year. Um, just a normal houseplant feed is fine. You can feed more if you want to. Some people love to feed, and that's... That's fine, that's cool, you can do that. Just be careful because they're not, if they're not growing, they're not using their fertilizer in, in large quantities. Um, even if the plant's not growing, they're still using it. They're still using the nutrients you're providing. So it's not like never feed house plants or it's a waste of time completely, but they're not gonna be using it. And the more you give to a plant that doesn't need as much feed and is not utilizing it as much as something that's really hungry, the chances of fertilizer burn or damaging the roots from just the buildup of nutrients and salts in, in, in the soil. So you don't need to feed regularly is my advice on this tip. Okay, so repotting. Earlier I said that sunlight and overwatering were no-nos and things that this plant does not like. And actually repotting is on that scale too. Not as high up, it's not as drastic, but it is something to be a little bit cautious of. Um, they don't like it. They don't like to be repotted too frequently. Um, every time I do it, I lose a couple of leaves. They just don't respond well. Um, it's just unusual, actually, because um, the roots are quite uh, fibrous. They're string-like. They're, if I can remember correctly, they're white, and they're kind of, yeah, there's quite a lot of them. They, they're kind of quite chunky. And in my experience, usually houseplants, which have quite a lot, quite a strong root system, they don't tend to really mind repotting because you hardly damage them, basically, because they're so, they're so strong. But even if you don't seem to damage them much, they just don't like it. They don't like being disturbed and moved around. They, they're quite sensitive, sensitive to it. So I don't personally recommend that you should repot on a frequent basis. That's just my personal experience. Um, so, but I mean, every couple of years, they're going to need doing. If you're growing it properly and you are getting some new growth, then the roots will fill the pot and they, will, they can distort them quite easily. The roots are quite, like I said, they're quite strong. You can end up with a pot that's a little bit warped um because they're quite powerful they're quite they're just strong um so yeah you will need to repot eventually you need to put them in a slightly bigger pot and you just need to keep them moving on in size in order to keep new growth coming up um they need space basically the growth comes out of rhizomes and under the soil and they move and they need the air, they need they literally need the space to produce more growth um so that's why you need to repot them every so often Okay, potting mix, what to use. Right, okay, so these are grown in different potting mixes. 
this one first, Milky Way. Milky Way Aspidistra, let's talk about that. Okay, so it is growing in coconut coal. I like it, okay? One, it dries out fast. Um, it helps me prevent overwatering. And it's sustainable, so I like those things. It does need feeding more. Coconut coal does not contain nutrients like some other potter mixes, so you do need to fertilize it slightly more. Not excessively, maybe twice, twice? Um, maybe once every two months, maybe, so maybe six times a year, perhaps, that sort of thing. I'm not being specific here, okay? I Sometimes people are really, really specific about what people say. Uh, it's, it's generic, okay? The plant will cope with one feed a year, or it may even cope with 10 feeds a year. It, it doesn't matter. It, it's variable, okay? So don't feel too bad and you're not following a strict routine. It's just, trying, when you can remember, do give it some feed, they would appreciate it. When I talked earlier in the video, I said, just don't overdo it. That's important. Just don't go crazy. Don't be feeding it high amounts every single time you water, for example. So just go a bit easy. But they are tolerant. They will cope with a broad range of different feeding schedules. So don't worry too much about that. I like coconut core and I will recommend that, yes. This one growing is this one is growing in a potting mix which is peat free um it has more organic material in it so i might feed it a little bit less but it's quite good um it holds on to water a little bit more than perhaps i would like it, it's not too much different to be fair but it does hold on to a little bit more water and a little less frequently needs to water using that both plants seem to respond in well i can't really pick which is better it's going to depend on your circumstances but i like both and I'd probably nudge towards coconut core, but it's what's available. If you have something ready to use, it, you're probably going to be okay to use that. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope it has been useful and maybe potentially I've inspired you to look out for more Aspidistras. They are a little bit uncommon. Um, I feel like I said earlier, they're a tiny bit old fashioned in some people's eyes, but I still think they're really great houseplants. And I love the fact that they were one of the very first plants that people brought into their homes to act as health plants and we're still growing them and have them in our homes today and i think that's cool i think it's quite humbling i think it reminds us of kind of i don't know our history almost as, as plant collectors as people who are plant enthusiasts and things like that just to remember where it all started is kind of it's cool i like it it's a legacy plant i suppose um yeah anyway i'm just rambling on now but like I say, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I don't want to say it, but if you want to, if you want to see more videos, do obviously like and subscribe and notif notification bell and all that. But yeah, please, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you hopefully in the next video.